again and welcome to Manch Talk. I am Tammy Simmons Garthwaite. And I am Carla Garrick, author of The Ecstatic <laughs> Pessimist. <laughs> ah. <laughs> Gonna get a plug in today. I was just, uh, my, you know how the memories come up yes, on Facebook? Yes. So my interview on C-SPAN came up and someone was like, yes. this is a great interview. And I was like, okay. yeah, actually it probably Sometimes is the best the one. Is not, not that it was completely off the cuff, but sometimes those off the cuff ones come, up, come out better because they're less... You know, I mean, we've both done interviews enough times where you're in your head. I don't know about you, but in my head, my brain's telling me what I'm supposed to say next and what I'm not supposed to say next. And then the words are just coming out and my brain's doing this. So sometimes those are a little more more managed. The ones that are off the cuff sometimes, the brain can't work fast enough. And things just, and they, they just come out naturally. <laughs> uh. I mean, that's part of actually working on having a notion at all times in one's life yes. what is about to come out of your yes. mouth. I mean, I love to jokingly say, hey, we have no idea what I'm about to say, but, but I work really hard at being like, well, yeah. I'm very present yeah. in the now. So, you know, I mean, when I when I was, there's lots, you know, and not everybody's good at it. To no. be honest, like even people who have good ideas just aren't good on... Like, well, I think journaling has a lot to do with that. I think as a lawyer, having a very if-then-that mm -hmm. kind of logical mm -hmm. brain... I just have the whole, is, been in politics long enough, I have a message, and I stick to my right. message and don't deviate, and this is a trick for those of you watching interviews. It really doesn't matter what the interviewer asks. I'm going to answer the question the, question the way I want it to be. In the que so you can say, you know... Do you eat a lot of sugar? And I'm going to talk about my living room furniture. <laughs> and somehow it's going to transition. You 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 get good at it. Yes. Anyways, oh. um, just before we started, uh, this wasn't on what I was going to talk about, but I just want to touch base because I didn't bring the paperwork, so I'm going to be talking without numbers. Um, on last week's show of what did they call their show? Right with Courage, which is Brittany Ping and Victoria Sullivan. Uh, Victoria was talking about um, the SNU arena mm -hmm. because she says people have asked her and she's asked Alderman and people really struggle to understand um, how it came to be and who pays for it and what the numbers are and everything. And I'll be honest, I mm. read, she, she, I should actually look because she sent me the information that um, the finance department provided to her. Okay. And even then, I was like, okay. So my understanding was that it was a downtown revitalization mm -hmm. program that was started whenever it happened. 2000. Yeah, so it's not even that long ago, nope. or long enough for the slush fund to be well, happily so slushing. But from what I un from what I can gather, and I like I said, I'm not going to get into specific numbers because the numbers, like on one hand, it says one thing, and then you're like, how did we go from five hundred and forty-seven thousand dollars to nine point something million? So, oh. No, ask the big dig. No, I'm asking. <laughs> if, I'm wondering if somewhere in the conversation, like literally, it wasn't five forty seven thousand. Oh, no, like, it might have been five point four million, and now it's a. So basically, back when Ray Wazorek was mayor, and I remember this pretty clearly. Um, in fairness, downtown was a big, hot, ugly. Bleh. Honestly, when we came to New Hampshire the first time from New York City, which yep. would have been 2003, yep. four ish It was probably still a little sketchy I, down there, huh? Honestly, Tammy, I went downtown. There were, there were stores that were boarded yep. up. Yep. And I actually stood on the sidewalk in what? February and I started crying. And I said to my husband, if you make me live here... I will probably I never well, forgive you. Well, so that's you. what I, that's the way it was. <laughs> and like where the Snoo Arena was, there was this sketchy um, Ames, I think it was, or Zare. It was a Zare department store. There might have been a Hannaford there. And if it was, it's the one that I saw a rat in once. Like it was just, <laughs> there was just a lot about downtown that was bad. Okay. So the proposal came forward that like we should build an arena. Because that is actually a really, uh, a uh, great cover story stadium sports stadiums yeah. is a really great way for cronyism to fester yeah. and get so, done so i mean they went into it with the we're going to bond this which interestingly enough the bond runs out i think in 6 years so i mean 6 yeah, years so so much you find out what what the numbers are no well i'm just <laughs> saying if that it's just cuz time passes so they're talking about the numbers, and I'm like, well, six years isn't that far off. If mm -hmm. it's going to be done, 
Like, now's not the time to be worrying about how we were paying for it. We've been paying for it for 24 years. So basically, from what I understand, so was the city bonded the building of it, right? Okay. And it's managed by, a, just like everything, it's managed, thankfully, by some not city thing. And the, from what I could understand, like, five, almost $500,000 of room and meals tax that comes back into the city of Manchester would go to pay the bond. So I'm like, okay, okay, that's, that's not terrible. I mean, you know, okay. So then, um, the management company, they profit, but they should, like, I don't hold it against them for profiting. That's their sure, business they're... model. And then supposedly if there was like really good profits, the city would benefit from that, but there's never been, even in its best years, that type of profit. No, I bet you we're paying above market rates for all the so, middlemen. So now, though, when you look at the finance numbers, I, I couldn't figure out. They were trying to say, it said something about $9.4 million in, pro, in room and meals tax. And I thought, that doesn't even make any sense. Like, the the, the email from them just didn't add up. Like, something's not, one of these numbers is not pointing so to the same thing. So this is an email in response to a Victoria a asked, request. and then they okay. answered her, I and see. she shared it with me. So, basically, and I, again, also not clear, because this also, this happens, I don't think it's intentional when they write back and give you an answer. They just assume that you know all the information that's in their head. So, let's just say it was $500,000 was a, the agreed upon um payment from this room and meals tax to go towards the bond, then I can't, couldn't figure out if everything above the 500000 in room and meals tax goes back to the city for other spending, or does everything over also go to the bond, but in the, you know, towards the principal. So now we ha get a whole lot more in room and meals tax than we ever used to. So... As much as people don't like that the gov that the taxpayers of Manchester like, you can't. I don't know if you can fairly say it doesn't benefit the residents of Manchester because you stood on a corner in downtown Manchester and cried because it was that bad. Um, well, we can't. I mean, you can't. No, just, you can't say the building the snoo with government debt is the reason downtown was revitalized. But it really. It but there is. Really, a, there really was a. In a was there a, or is it in that same thing where you're at the cusp of something that's about to happen? The government no, happens to do something stupid or they happen to do something I not so stupid, but then they claim everything as their I solution. Do, from my recollection, it did seem as soon as the arena was being, you know, almost open, that's when restaurants came back downtown because there was no reason to, who was going to eat downtown if there's nothing there. And, and I mean, I mean, just look at Murphy's. The only reason Murphy's exists in the location it exists is because of the arena. I'm not saying that the taxpayers need to subsidize that, right. but I'm just saying it, it was, it was hard. And Dan says it is hard for those who weren't here or weren't, weren't old enough or whatever to be critical of why that was done when if you were here you have a and so i'm like yeah i was in the here mode so i do have a little bit of but again i mean just from a free market perspective if it truly was the revitalization and all of that then there should have been a profit margin because someone is making money right the middleman uh, so the question is, why did we have to subsidize it with government money? And maybe there's a compelling reason. I don't know. And I, the one thing you that know. I would love to be able to do, because I always like to look at the numbers, is, okay, so that $500,000, like, how, many, how much sales tax does the SNU Arena generate? Because I don't know. Because you got all those ticket sales. Right, and, and honestly, it and seems maybe, pretty underutilized, to be honest, now it too. Does. It used to like, be, when, I mean, when we first started and they had uh, the I Monarchs mean, hockey, it was very, so, very So hopping. when we lost the hockey, that was, that was, a, that big was deal. a big deal. And, and COVID. It's, and, well, COVID. no, even before that. I mean, honestly, I go to a fair amount of social things. Mm -hmm. And as far as I can recall, because Louie and I were talking about this the other day, I think I've only ever been to one event at oh, the I've arena. Oh, I've been a couple. We and went to the Boston to, Pops. Um, I've been to... You know, Cirque du Soleil. Yep, Bill, I've seen Bill Burr is actually coming up, the comedian from so, from uh, Boston, and I was like, "Oh, that could be kind of cool." But it would if we be start interesting doing... to see if the rooms and meals tax is similar. Like, if we're if if the Snow Arena is bringing in five hundred thousand dollars a year in rooms and meals tax, then I, then fine. 
Because without it there, they probably, you know, right. it's not like they would have a concert someplace else. So anyways, they were talking about it. I'm gonna, I am going to, I forgot to look into it more. And I do want to get more information because I like to understand where the money goes and where it comes you know, and like what right. the difference and, is. And, and honestly, what happens is whoever's involved in the project feels passionately something happens. Yep. And then people forget, you know, we, we've on the show, we've talked about this in the past. Um, I forget if it was with regard, I don't think it was the SNU, it was the waterfront development, but, mm -hmm. you know, Elliott Hospital was supposed oh, to they build were supposed several to build parks green area, and, and they put never in did. green areas and do things um, where there were representations made yep. to the city that were not honored. Yep. And so I'm pretty sure when you go back and look at all of these things, it's like there's someone's smelly, dirty laundry well, so somewhere. So now, also in the last couple of weeks, so Hallsville School, yes, which has been closed for two years. Okay is still not sold because the city sticks their nose in and tries to manipulate it. And quite honestly, there's a simple solution to this. Just put it on the market. Right. And somebody will buy it. And, you know, if you want it to be housing, there's a good chance that a developer would buy it and maybe turn the school building into like, yeah, that well, was actually a model done yeah. by a lot of people. So in the it, 90s, it's just I amazing. Believe. Yeah, we did my hometown. Before I moved to New Hampshire, I mean, I, even in the, I'd say in the 70s, in the 70s, they started turning old because there were so many more neighborhood schools back in the day. I mean, my grade school only had like, you know, 16 kids in a class, right? you know, but so there were a lot of those buildings that became available and they turned, I, there were some in my hometown way back then that, um, or apartments. Well, actually, here in New Hampshire, I believe in the late 90s, I remember I, I, I had a meeting with Paul Mursky once, mm -hmm. who was a state rep and an architect, and uh, they, they I guess there was this model where they converted a lot of the older schools into apartment yeah. buildings. We see There's yeah. one very near your house, yeah. there's one very yeah. near my house on the west side. Um, but then a lot of those became Section 8 housing, mm. and then it became a perverse incentive, which, of course, is something we talk about a yeah. lot here, because then it's, you know, so then people only want to do the conversions if they get the Section 8, because yeah. the Section 8 it's is guaranteed, guaranteed money. Income. Even if it's lower money, it's guaranteed. Right, and, yeah, it's, and it's so a... then you start to create a, a incentive cycle to actually keep people poor which is so, not what like the school building i mean i'm just in some of the notes in the article so it says that there's i can't find put my finger on it now but there's like 54 parking spots okay so that obviously could accommodate um 54 well even if you divide it by two that's 26 units right okay i mean isn't this what we keep talking but meanwhile two years have passed if you had just put it on the market two years ago there'd probably be people living in that building right now. but gee why don't we they have any affordable way. housing um, because on, everyone meddles too on much on the government side i do want to rip through some things um next let's go through the let's go through calendar next tuesday uh that would be the 22nd is this the dam yep. thing? The New the Hampshire. Dam, the dam. The New Hampshire Department of Environmental Services, I'm assuming, um, has a meeting at the Institute of Politics at St. A's from 6 to 8 p.m. And they're going to be t discussing the, the dam management. Um, so, so, folks, which, this is actually kind of a big deal. It is a big deal. Because if you uh, live on the west side or in mm -hmm. Goffstown, yep. so they're the two dams. Yep. And they're basically talking about shutting down yeah. one of the dams, the one in Goffstown, which would, first of all, I mean, decimate actually the town, right? Because, well, because they're saying you have to be able to put in a fish ladder yeah. so that the fish can get back. I mean, it's just a it's a bit. Medley. I mean, don't get me wrong. <laughs> I'd love to see you know more fish be in the river and the lakes and everything. But um, when we were discussing it at a Friends of Piscataqua River Park meeting, somebody made a comment because somebody says, "Well, we should return it to the way it used to be. You know, we should return it to its original habitat." And somebody else said. But this is the habitat. This has been the habitat for a hundred years. Right. So why is this habitat, which is the humans, not be, that is a habitat? You know, I mean, it's not like they just put these dams in ten years ago and now they're going to take them out and we're like, oh, but eleven years ago, we're talking these dams have been there for like you know a century, and they created. Um, well, property. a lifestyle and property. Uh, I mean, I feel bad for the people and... who live on the lake there, not Glen Lake. It would be impacted, I believe, by the um, upper dam. 
And then the masked lake would definitely be, because now they're talking, I mean, when you talk to people who understand the way all this natural stuff happens, there's a good chance that it would go from a lake to just a, you know, just a small river again. And I'm like, okay, so what does that do to the person who's been paying, you know, high property taxes for waterfront property and improve their property only to find out that instead of the water being here, the water is going to be, you know, hundreds of feet away. Well, also, it's sort of like, okay. And whose land does that become? Right. Well, that, and it's like, what problem are we trying to solve? Why is the EPA sticking their nose mm. in the Granite Stater's business? So. Like, all of it. So, so I that's think next Tuesday. Be... I, I, it'll be interesting. I want to hear what the state says, because I, my, if I had a bit of beer, I would say that Goffstown's going to have to step up with some money to, to make the fish ladder happens so that the dam doesn't go away. Yeah, but I guess those fish ladders cost like thirteen million well, that's dollars. What they say, but, you, you know, know and I was like, really? Somehow it'll happen. Can't we just um, have a crane that just has a net right? and does this once a day? Um. So yeah. So that's on Tuesday. Then on Wednesday, um, at the Rex Theater, and I believe it's at six o'clock, but don't quote me on that. Um, is the first of a series. There seems to be three or four of them. There'll be a mayoral debate. Oh. Uh, with the four mayoral candidates. So their tickets are no longer available. They're, it's, they're all gone. Wow. Um, but that'll be interesting. And I've read that, uh, I think Manchester Young, this might be the Manchester Young Professional one. I don't really recall. Um, but there's like three or four different groups that are doing a ma uh, mayoral debate or round table or whatever. Nice. So it'd be interesting to see and be able to shop and compare and, you know, see the difference between the various candidates. That same night is the first GOP presidential debate. So that's a busy debate night. Um, there's two events. There's Murphy's in Manchester, which is uh, being put on by Americans for Prosperity. Is and, that a watch party? Yep. Or, yeah. And, and Murphy's in Bedford has Southern, uh, New Hampshire Federation of Republican Women. They're doing oh, wow. a thing over there. So um, the debate is in Milwaukee starting at 8, which means it'll start at 9 here. Who's debating? Well, all of them. No, it, there's criteria. So right. I tried to get like, could I get real numbers? And you know, it's all speculation. So right now there are eight candidates that definitely have qualified. Uh, Donald Trump, DeSantis, Nikki Haley, Tim Scott, Vivek Ramaswamy, Chris Christie, Doug Burgum, which blows my mind, and Mike Pence. Uh, oh, Fra wow. Francis so Suarez, the mayor of Miami, claims to have met the criteria and he has until 48 hours before the debate to prove that so and the criteria is 40,000 um, uh, small donors is it 40,000 individual donors, donors at least one percent um polling in a, like a national poll or there's a way to do local polls um and you have to agree to endorse Whoever the, the candidate is. So there's debate whether Chris Christie will show up, whether D Trump will show up, because Chris, and, 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 and to be honest, I'm just tired of hearing them all bash each other. If, if Trump would talk about policy, I could listen to him. Um, I feel like DeSantis doesn't talk about policy. He just talks about Trump. Chris Christie just talks <laughs> about Trump. Um, Nikki Haley, Tim Scott, Vivek all seem to talk about policy. I mean, Vivek definitely is right? very, like, he's, um, he's wonkish and you, has some good I plans and ideas. I couldn't tell you what Doug Burgum says because I I know he's a governor of even some northern state, and I don't know how he made this number. And, I, and Mike Pence is just I Pence. only recently saw his name for the first time. I saw time somebody yesterday. Guy. I got a mail yesterday from some guy named something Binkley for president. And I'm like, Dan goes, how is how are we getting mail from somebody you've Hi. never heard from? So, I anyways, that's though. next Wednesday. America. Um, also this weekend. Now I'm jumping backwards. 18th and 19th. So I'm assuming that Saturday and Sunday is Ma Rajan. Oh, Ma Rajan. I can never say it. Ma Rajan. Um, which is over on um at the. Is it at the Greek? It's at the the Middle Eastern Church on. It's not Brown Ave. Um, is that Brown Ave? That but, is Brown uh, Avenue. Brown Ave. Um. I think we stopped in once. It's really for fun. Really good kebabs. It, yeah, it's or got something. really it's good, good food. food, and they have music and stuff. It's yeah. it's kind of like Glendy, but Middle Eastern. Right. And so that's this weekend. And um, honestly, it's a it's a good excuse, you know, if people don't have money to travel, which most people don't because inflation mm. is real, and we are all getting poorer. But you can do these little life hacks yeah. where you just literally yeah. go do something in your own backyard that you wouldn't yeah. do ordinarily, and going to a yeah. festival like this I mean, is, you, uh, is if literally you don't like just that. hanging out. There. you know if you don't spend you don't have to spend money there's no admission um another free event um this is going forward a little bit but on labor day weekend on saturday the um second of september on labor day weekend from 2 to 4 p.m is west manchester day yep. which will be held at uh 
um, it depends on what you read, at the George Smith Sports Complex, which abuts the Piscataqua River Park. So I have a feeling it'll be at that. The, it's debatable what is in which park. You yeah. know what I mean? Like those buildings, I we both probably claim them. So that'll be interesting. Um, I know the Friends of Piscataqua River Park are going to be there um, to talk about how to become a member of the uh, Friends group and also to walk people through the trails and show them like what we've done and where we're, what our plans are and stuff. So that's kind of fun. And that's a big family day. I mean, it's free. They do, uh, there's, you know, tug of war and there's, there's all the kid things, the parachute thing and all sorts of games. Um, they, you bring your own picnic lunch. It's just always a nice fun time. Yeah. It's a um, really great day out actually on the third, which will be the Sunday. So that is on the this Saturday, is on, Saturday. on the Sunday for folks who might be interested in crypto and hmm. uh, cryptocurrencies and trying to better understand that landscape. There's a small crypto conference. It's called the FSB. So that's the Free State Bitcoin Digital Currency <laughs> Conference. So it's FSB DAC. That's on Sunday. It's at the Fenton's uh, out in Dover. Hmm. The tickets are $35. There's an Eventbrite thing. FSB DAC will get you there. Uh, you know, we're going to have some thought leaders in the crypto space, maybe unveiling some hmm. interesting new uh, ways to invest or, uh, you know, bring in investment money to New Hampshire to uh, help keep it prosperous. Um, there was an article. Well, there was information. Um, Nashua and Manchester um, have in July had um, one of the worst months of the opioid crisis in years for overdoses. Um, they had, we had more overdoses in a single month than we had since 2018. Um, and that's an ongoing problem that we talk about all often. And I wanted to mention um, somewhere here, um, the organization that Victoria Sullivan and Brittany Ping and Marion Ward are involved with that um, it's called Freedom Movement New Hampshire. Um, the gentleman who owns the building, I'm, I feel terrible because I, I should get to know his name better. There's a gentleman who owned the building. His name is mm, Richard. <laughs> like that's not it. He's got a whole name. Anyways, he, um, he bought him and his wife would buy buildings and renovate them and then, um, rent them out to low income people. That's just like they're calling for life. They're involved in the zeal movement church. So, you know, this is their, their way of giving back to their community. So he bought the building at 99 Manchester street, which is right there in a rough little neighborhood. Um, city year used to house in there, but they just now have the first floor and the second two floors have, if I'm not mistaken, da, 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 14 single double and triple rooms that will house 25 men who are um, enrolled in this sober home. It's going to be a sober home. And the, the big reason they're doing this is it used to be the people who are successful with their rehab are ones that are in, you know, long rehab process. The 30 day rehab process and then drop you back into the life you were in just doesn't work. That's 30 days is not enough time to get a hold of yourself. I mean, think about just how fast a month goes in life. Imagine if you're addicted to drugs and trying to fix your oh, life. Oh yeah. It's I mean, not I don't go time. back to the bars that I used right. to drink at so, because it's, and you definitely wouldn't have gone back to the bar right when I mean, you were I go back to the bars for mean. functions, but like but, I don't go hang there uh, regularly. So, I dropped off a bunch of stuff for um, Brit to Brittany yesterday, and it made me just think. There's a what I like about it is there's nobody getting a paycheck. You know, it's not an income. There's no income for anybody. Um, they are working with the gentlemen that come out of 30 day rehab to keep them sober, connect them with jobs. If they're interested in you know any kind of religion, you know, a faith thing, they they'll connect them with that. But that's definitely like it's a faith based thing, but not a requirement. It's kind of like when you send your kids to Catholic school; they don't actually have to be Catholic, right? And um, I didn't know that. I thought yeah, they nope, did. <laughs> nope. Um, and that, and I'm not even sure that most not all Catholic schools even like. It's just different. It surprises me. I didn't know that. Um, so they had a list out a while ago of things that they needed. And they have an Amazon wish list. It's very small and everything. But um, they were looking for, you know, they they have to outfit 25 beds. So they need twin sheet sets. They need towels. They need some decent cookware. So They're, call to action, folks. Yes. Where so can if, people donate? Well, I, it's hard for me. I couldn't. 
find oh, an okay. easy link. But if you have want to help, um, I bought. I went over to Walmart yesterday. I bought ten bed pillows. I had a nice. set of twin sheets. I don't know why I don't own a twin bed. <laughs> I had some really good quality bath towels that just don't match our decor that are you know standing on a shelf in my basement. And I had some cookware, so I brought that stuff over and some coffee makers. Nice. And um, we were just talking about like they need nightstands or they might need wall mirrors. So. If you want to help and if you want me to give you information on where you can donate financially because they do need financial contributions to survive, um, email us at manchtalk at gmail.com and I will put you in touch with Brittany or Victoria or somebody over there at Freedom Movement New Hampshire. And, you know, it's nice to see, like, they're actually making progress. I knew, no, a couple weeks ago, they two men moved in and they're working on getting more people and I'm sure it'll fill up quick. And the plan is, like, they will have to pay rent and they have to put like 25% of their earnings aside in savings so that after nice. a year, they have money for a deposit and first month's rent oh, that's on their own smart. Part. Like there's a, it's a plan. Teach right. them how to be functional Gee, members of the society. Gee, if only we told people in public school how to actually manage their lives, but so. no, magma is the center <laughs> of the earth. So that's a good thing that's going on. Um, I'm sure there's other things going on. I, yeah, I think we're out of time anyway. I so Told you, um, we never run out of things to say. No, um, we'll be back. Oh no, look, we still have two minutes. We can talk oh. a little bit. Um, <laughs> let's see what else. Um, Labor Day. Like, how is it possible? It's almost Labor Day, which means kids will be going back to school. Which and you then know. we have a big uh, for the uh, Free State Project has a, a Get to Know New Hampshire Fall event coming oh, nice. up. So that'll be Columbus Day it's not, weekend. Summer's not over. Oh my God, I got to butt heads with things. I shared a meme yesterday. I said, put your pumpkin, pumpkin spice, spice on away. old. I'm still having my margaritas. <laughs> but um, summer still is, you know, like people, when August hits, they're like, oh my God, it's no. over. And I'm like, and honestly, that is another life hack. Like, if you want to be happier in life, extend your summers right. if summer makes you happy. If you my love camping fall, season's just starting. I plan on camping early. for the next, you know, six, right. eight weeks. Yep. So. so go figure. Oh. Anyways, that, now we're going to run out of time. Uh, we'll be back next week um, with more wonderful information for you. And um, until then, enjoy summer, and we'll see you next week. Bye, guys.